Hi, I'm Jeff Fouts, a tax attorney located in Metro Atlanta with a nationwide law practice helping clients who have serious IRS problems. I'd like to share with you another client case study from the thousands of tax clients we've represented. A married couple in their late 40s from Marietta, Georgia, originally hired us to assist them with filing an offer in compromise. After reviewing their financial information, we discovered they did not qualify for an offer. However, we noticed on their IRS account transcripts that the IRS had assessed additional taxes for several years. Our clients told us they had no idea why additional taxes were assessed. We spoke with a local IRS revenue officer and requested to uh, try to get copies of the underlying paperwork on the additional taxes assessed. But this revenue officer, this person could not help us. So we contacted another special office that may could help us. This second office was able to provide us with copies of, cor of a correspondence audit, it's a mail audit, uh, which had requested proof of our client's basis in a large family partnership loss. When we had asked our clients for this information so that we could request an audit reconsideration, in other words, the backup financial information, they told us the information was simply not available. We all agreed that it would be best if we ended our representation at that time since there was nothing further we could do without the additional backup financial information. Several years later, these same clients rehired us to file an audit reconsideration because they were able to locate documentation supporting their partnership basis. Our clients owed over $160,000 and the IRS had a partial pay installment agreement uh, being paid through a payroll deduction on the husband's wages. Our first step was to obtain a signed uh, uh, IRS Form 2848 and Form 8821, which allowed the IRS to speak with us and allowed us to proceed with our representation of the client. This audit reconsideration was more unusual than most audit reconsiderations we've handled because of the way the IRS service had handled the correspondence audit. Let me explain. A correspondence audit, just for background, is an audit that is conducted by mail rather than you coming into an IRS office or them going out to your home or place of business. When a correspondence audit is done, uh, is started, they're required to mail letters to your last known address by regular mail. And so that puts you on notice, hey, we're going to audit you. But in this case, the IRS mailed the correspondence paperwork to the taxpayer's previous address. And, the, and so that, and it didn't get to the client because they didn't have in their database the correct address. And so the IRS updates their database in one of two ways. Either when, number one, when an IRS files a tax return with a new address, or if the taxpayer files a form 8822, which is a change of address notification. Well, in this particular case, the clients had filed their current tax return with their new address six months earlier than the IRS had sent out their paperwork. The IRS simply did not send the correspondence audit to the taxpayer's last known address. They messed up. This was very unusual, but they messed up. This error on the IRS's part extended the normal time frame in which a client is allowed to file an, a request for an audit recon, an audit reconsideration. All taxpayers must be provided with the opportunity to respond to a correspondence audit within three years. And so what happened was the mistake that the IRS had made in regard to the addressing issue in this case gave the, gave the taxpayers, our clients, an unlimited amount of time in which to rebut or challenge the audit changes. Because the client never got the, uh, the paperwork, there was never a time frame, a beginning clock running, tick, 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 tick. There was never an end time. Click, oh, you're out of luck because the clock never started running, tick, 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 because they had never got the paperwork. Okay, so what we did was we, were, we prepared the audit reconsideration and filed it with the IRS Examination Division. Months later, we received a, a letter from the IRS rejecting the audit recon because they thought it was filed too late. What we did was we appealed this ruling to the IRS Appeals Division, who agreed with us. 
and sent, said, okay, we're going to send the audit reconsideration back to the examination division with instructions to, to process. In other words, they sent a letter saying, hey, these, this uh, tax attorney is right. You go ahead and deal with this like you're supposed to. But again, months later, we received another letter rejecting the audit reconsideration because the IRS said it was filed too late. Someone needs to put on their thinking cap because someone isn't even reading what the appeal division is sending them. So again, we appeal to the IRS appeals division who again agreed with our arguments and sent the audit reconsideration back down to the audit division. You know, you'd hope that they get the message. So we're now eight months into the most recent audit reconsideration period and our clients are understandably frustrated with the IRS bureaucracy. But, you know, this is an example of how sometimes things in a tax case are out of the control of either the attorney, us, or the client. Sometimes things are kind of in control of the IRS, even though the IRS is admitting on the one hand that we're right, that they ought to look at this. On the other hand, the little bureaucrats are saying, oh, it looks like uh, you're not eligible and we're going to send it back to you. Well, eventually we may have to climb on up the ladder and get what we want, but, you know. So in other words, we're confident that we'll win once the IRS Examination Division finally reviews the audit recon paperwork, but dealing with them has not been easy. In all honesty, it's a pain in the rear, especially for the client. So what's the moral of this story, though? Don't give up. You can be frustrated, but don't give up if you're right. Hire someone that's, that knows how to work through the maze, that knows how to, to deal with the IRS when things are going good and when things are going bad. And so the only way that you can do that in all candor is by hiring someone with a lot of experience in the field, in the trenches. They don't teach this in books. I hope this important client case study has helped you understand the IRS a little bit better and about how tax problems are solved. Chances are you have questions or concerns about your own particular tax problem, and I encourage you to pick up the phone and call me. I can answer your questions. Over the past 20 years, I've represented thousands of clients in all 50 states and in 29 foreign countries, and I welcome your call. You can reach me at the phone number on this, uh, this video or by email at jfouts at taxhelpattorney.com. I'm Jeff Fouts, and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.